Okay, so I grew up near this family that had five kids, and all five of them were girls. What are the chances? In this video, we're going to talk about that. Um, also, we're going to talk about constructing tree diagrams for sample spaces. We're going to discuss the multiplication rule for independent events. And we're going to also discuss the probability of at least one. Okay, so basically, what's the probability of them having at least one boy? Come on now, five girls? Wow, that's a lot of girls. Okay. Okay, so starting with the tree diagram for the sample space. Okay, and the tree diagram, the reason I guess it's called that is because just like a tree, it starts with the main stem and then it branches off. Okay, and so the tree diagram basically does the same thing. Okay, you'll see a branching occurring. So starting with the first kid, if you only have one kid, you basically, you're going to have a male or a female, and your sample space is going to be like one kid, male, female, that's it, right? So what's the probability of having all girls when you only have one kid? Well, okay, one kid. So you have two possible choices. Uh, one of them is a female out of those two choices, so it's one half. Makes sense. Everyone can pretty much get that, even without any tree diagram or anything, okay? Okay, but now what about two kids? Okay, so now we're starting to see the branching happening. So you're, you have your first kid, and it's a female. Then from there, you could have another female, or you could have had a male, okay? So that's female, 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 male. Another thing that could have happened is you could have started with a male. And then you would have had a female, or you could have had a male. And that's the second branch. Okay. So what's the probability of having all girls when you only have two kids? All right, we look over here to our sample space. And how many of these have only girls? Well, just the top one, right? So there's one out of four possible choices, or in other words, 0.25 or 25%, okay? So if you have two kids, still a pretty good chance of having all girls. What about the probability of having at least one boy? If you have two kids, what's the probability of having at least one boy? So if we go over to our sample space and we say, okay, so at least one boy, that means Here's at least one boy, here's at least one boy, and here's at least one boy. What are we seeing there? We're basically, we're seeing three out of the four choices. Okay, notice that there's something interesting that happened there. At least one appears to have been the exact opposite of having all girls, right? All girls would have been that FF, but at least one boy was everything else. All right, and that's a nice little fact we want to keep in mind. So the probability of at least at least one boy equals one minus the probability of no boy. Okay, no boy in this case would be basically all girls. All right, and this is called a complement right? Because they complement each other. Together, they make up the entire sample space. So no boy is the same thing as all girls. So one minus uh, one fourth, which is that three fourths. Okay, so now moving on to three kids. So let's look at this first tree choice here. So we had a female first, then we had a female, then we could have a female. Okay. That's this first element in the sample space. All right, we could have then had a male, and that would be the second element in the sample space. Okay, or we could have had a, started with a female, then had a male, then a female, and that's the third element. So female, male, female. Or we could have female, male, then male. Female, male, male. Okay, etc. This is our sample space. All right, so if you have three kids, 
what's the probability of having all three of them being girls? Again, there's only one possible choice. One way you can have three girls. It's this one up top. All of the rest of these families are going to have at least one boy. So one out of how many do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One out of eight. All right, it's kind of getting like our trees looking really like big now. So let's talk about the multiplication rule. It would kind of be a shortcut for us, right? So instead of having to do write this tree every time, we could use this rule. So what does the multiplication rule say? It says that the probability of event A and B and C and however many other events you want to add there is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B multiplied by the probability of C. Okay, multiplied by the probability of however many more events you have. Okay, so as long as the events are independent, the probability of them occurring together is just the product of their probabilities. All right, so in this case, the probability of having a female first is one half. All right, so then when you have the next kid, it's independent of the first kid because it doesn't ask the first kid what you are, right? It just gets born. So these are independent children and the probability of the second one being a female is also one half. The probability of the third kid being a female is also one half. What's happening here? It's basically one half times one half times one half, which is one eighth. Okay, so you see that multiplication rule, it saved us time and energy in writing that tree diagram. Okay, so now we know the probability of having all girls. What's the probability of having at least one boy when you have three kids? At least one boy. That's basically all of the other ones. All the other families have at least one boy except for that first family that has all girls. So that's seven out of eight. Okay, so now we have four kids. You seen that you're seeing now that the tree diagram is getting much bigger and our sample space is also getting much larger. Okay, so what's the probability of having all girls when you have four kids? Well, how many choices do I have? Ooh, so many, I don't even wanna count it. I can use my multiplication rule again to figure this out. So the first girl was the one half. The second girl also has a one half probability of happening. The third girl has a one half probability of happening. And the fourth girl has a one half probability of happening. This is the same thing as one half to the fourth power. All right, which is one sixteenth. All right, now what's the probability of having at least one boy when you have had four kids? All right, so we know that basically at the at least one, remember we talked about how that's the complement of having all four girls or no boys. Okay, so that's gonna be equal to one minus the probability of having all girls or no boys, right? It's basically everything else, which is equal to 15 over 16. Okay, now we have five kids. Whew, that is a big sample space. Thank goodness we have the multiplication rule. Okay. So what's the probability of having all girls? Well, that's the probability of having girl for the first kid, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. Or in other words, one half to the fifth power, right? Which will be one over 32. So there are 32 elements in that sample space and one of them has all girls. Otherwise, you have at least a boy in there. So, whew, that's a pretty rare family. Okay, so now what's the probability of having at least one boy when you have five kids? So remember, 
that the probability of at least one, one boy, is going to be equal to one minus the probability of no boy, right? So one minus one over 32, which is 31 over 32. So it's pretty likely that you'll have at least one boy when you have five kids.